Two, I have a little index card. Three, I have my event planner. And then of course I have my notes. So, okay, glasses on the rock. So the, the last regional, I did a training on our virtual office. And when we went underneath part of it at the bottom, there's a little box for my team data. And in there, there's a link for former reports. And I had mentioned how I use my genealogy report and I held it out how I used it for customer service. And a lot of people had come up to me afterwards and said, you know, gosh, I'd really like to know that training. So I'm gonna just take a couple minutes and share with you just a little follow-up of that training. So this is gonna be just a basic customer care 101 on how to use your genealogy report. And you get your genealogy report from the cut from NSA, from the Juice Plus company, every weekend. On Sunday, they send it out to you. And most people just open it up and they kind of just look through it to see if anyone's declined or, you know, if they've had a credit card issue. But they don't really use it for customer service. And so I'm going to show you how to use it for customer service. And I'm going to read some of my notes. So why, first of all, do you want to do customer service? And I know for me, when I do my coaching call with NSA, they always tell me, Tammy, you very seldom ever have any cancels. And if you do, they're just leads. And usually it's because the leads don't know me, and sometimes I have a hard time building a relationship with them. And what I love about the Juice Plus company is you're not, it's not retailing. You're not going out there to get two or 300 customers. Your customer base should be your family and your friends and the people that you love and you care about. So you shouldn't be nervous to pick up the phone and call them. They're people that you see all the time, like your naturopath or your dentist or your neighbor. So it's good to give them customer service. I realized over time that if I give good customer service, they have experiences, they get results. And when they get results, they want to keep eating their Juice Plus. If, they're, if I'm not giving good customer service, they're not eating their Juice Plus, I'm pushing it back, then I'm pushing it back more, pushing it back more, and eventually they're wondering, why did I order this again? And then they cancel. And then I feel bad because I know I didn't give them good customer service. And I know I take direct responsibility for my customer service because I've eaten Juice Plus. I've licked complete off the counter. When I'm traveling, I've picked up, you know, we, we had some vineyards that rolled underneath the fridge. We picked them up and picked dust off them. Like, if, you, if they really knew the value of Juice Plus, they would never miss a day. And like me, they would probably double up. So I really really want them to have an experience and belief. So let's get started with printing our genealogy report and how to use that for customer care, because we only have a couple minutes, so can you please click to the next one. So after qualifiers day, the first thing I do, around the second or the third of the month, I know I picked funny names, um, I print my genealogy report. I go to my virtual office, I go to team data, I go into former reports, and I hit my personal preferred customer. And I actually print that out. I usually only print it out at the beginning of the month. The other times I always look at it. But at the beginning of the month, I print it out. I'm going to show you what I do after I print it out. So can you go to the next slide, please? The first thing I do is I look for declines. And as you can see, I had one decline this month. I highlight it, I circle it all the way across, and at that exact moment, I call the company because I want to know what happened. I want to know what happened. And then once they tell me what happened, if it's a credit card issue, I ask them, would you please take a moment and rebuild it and see? And sometimes they rebuild it and guess what? It was, you know, their debit card or they didn't get paid or something. And they're like, oh, it just went through. And then there's other times they're like, oh, the expiration date's old. They must have got a new card. And I'm like, okay. So then I get off the phone and I call the customer. And it's like before I used to call my customer first. And then sometimes I didn't know why and they didn't know why, so I called the company first to get the story because I don't want to look like a goofball when I call my customer. I want to know why I'm calling them. A lot of times, sometimes I'll just text them and say, hey, you know, these are my friends. Like, hey, Melissa, did you get a new CC? Um, I just got a funny email from the company and they'll text me back, oh, I did. And, and I'm like, when should I call you? And then I just take care of it. The next thing I do is I look, next slide, please. I look for the C's. And as you can see here, there's one C. And a lot of times, I first I want to look and go, gosh, did I know that was a cancel? Because if it was a cancel last month, sometimes it'll roll over again. You'll see them a couple times on their genealogy report until they fall off. But sometimes I look at them and I go, what happened there? Did they call behind my back and cancel? What happened? And then I call the company and they're like, oh, it was initial shipment. And I tried to build a credit card a couple times and then it declined and so we just canceled the order. One time I had a customer call me and say, 
I didn't get my order, Tammy. What happened? And then I went online and, oh my gosh, it had been canceled. Like 10 days. Had I been watching, I would have known that that was canceled, that it was a credit card issue. I had to wait till the customer called me. I was embarrassed. I swore I would never do that again. So I make sure if I call a customer after an alert, tell them that their order's gonna ship, I put a tickle in my DMO planner for two or three days out. Then I call them with the, you know, the ship date and let them know. I checked on their order, it really did ship. It's supposed to come next Tuesday. I followed through so that never would ever happen again because I that was egg on my face and I was embarrassed. So I look and see, the first thing I do is call the company, find out why they declined, the person call and cancel. I just want the story. Then I usually call the person and say, hey, I noticed that you canceled or there was a problem with your credit card, whatever, and then I take care of it right away. So those are the first two things I do the very minute that I print my genealogy report. Next slide, please. Then the next thing I do is I go through mine, and as you can see in green here, I've circled all the ones in the line where it says status that has an R. That means these are orders that I have previously reset. For some reason, they weren't ready, they went on holidays, they got backed up, they got gas, whatever their thing was. I, I pushed their order back, right? Those are the ones that I want to work on first. So I circle those. Those are resets. Next slide, please. And then I go through in another color, which you can see here I did in red. I highlight all of the A's. Those are active ones. Those are people that are eating Juice Plus every month. I know that at the beginning of the month, if I go through my genealogy report and I look at all my actives and I add up all the PVC, I know whether I will be qualified at the end of the month or not. Isn't that a tip? So if you have somebody on your team that is going for qualifications and they're going, how much more PVC do I need? And you're going, well, that's a good question. I don't know. Print out their downline, print out their genealogy report, add up all their actives, see where their current PVC is, and then see how many more orders they need to get. And then you'll know if they're going to be qualified. Isn't that awesome? I didn't know that the first time until Barb taught me that. Next slide, please. Then the next thing I do is I go down my next shipment date. And you can see here I've done this in yellow. I go through the month of September. I highlight every single order that's going to ship this month. I pull out my little card, as you can see here, and I write them all down on the front of the back. I know that I need to contact these people this month. If their order is going to ship on the 5th, please don't call them on the 4th. Call them right away or text them. There's these cute little pictures that you can say, your order's coming. And you can text them and say, hi, Christy, I haven't seen you in a while. Let's get together for coffee. I want you to know your order's going to ship on the 22nd of this month. I know it's far out, but I wanted you to put it on your calendar. Done. Done. Don't wait. If they ship and you don't call that person, you are going to have egg on your face like I did. And I hate having egg on my face. Call them before their order ships. This is the one thing that sets us apart from other, every other company is that we allow our customers to have control over their own order. You really do get paid for customer service. Allow them the right to control their order. Give them the right. Look ahead of the month. It takes two seconds, literally. I've taken care of my cancels, my declines, and my alerts, all within the first two or three days of the month. I don't wait for my little alert box. I look at it all the time, but I'm ahead of the game. I want these people to stay with me and I wanna give them good customer service. Okay, next slide, please. The very thing that I do now is, now that I've taken care of my cancels and my declines, I've updated my credit cards, I've gone through and highlighted everything. Now what I wanna do is my customer service and I have a whole month to do this now. The first ones I work on are my resets. These are the people that are not currently eating Juice Plus. Again, remember, I take full responsibility for that. I know that if I gave them better, you know, better education, invited them to an event like today, maybe a Facebook party, maybe I got together with coffee with them, maybe I shared something with them, a video, a link, something educational, my belief, a story, a three-way call. These are my friends. I care about them. I want them to eat their juice plus regularly. I don't want them to have a health crisis if I could help. I want to make sure that I give them good customer service. I want to build their belief. It's good for them. And imagine, look, I had 15 resets. Imagine what your paycheck would look like if every single customer you had was active. Would your paycheck double? You might even be qualified during POB. 
Now imagine if your whole entire downline's clients were all active. Imagine what your paycheck would look like. And those are people. Those are your friends, your families, and your kids. This is a big deal. They need to eat their juice plus. Next slide. After that, I work on my actives because these are my, I don't want to say my bread and butter, but these are the people that are ordering every single month. These are my raging clients. They love their Juice Plus. They love me and they respect me. I want to stay close with them. I want to hear their story. I want to invite them to local events. I want them to meet my team. I want them to learn about this incredible mission. If they love their Juice Plus as much as I do, they should be telling their friends and family and getting them healthy. I also want to stay with them because you know the three D's, right? That happened to me, right? Disease, divorce, and then there's debt. What happens if something changes with them? Like my friend Shauna at the grocery store who said to me, oh, I wish I would have known there was a business behind you. Plus, Tammy, how come you didn't tell me? I've been struggling. God, kick in the butt. Okay, next one. So remember, you have a whole month to do this. What I do is when I talk to somebody, I highlight it. You can see I've highlighted everybody but three people. Do I always talk to everybody? Not always, but it's my intention. This sits out on my desk every day, and then when it's done, I three-hole punch it, and I put it in my binder. Because this month, I want to see how many resets and actives I had and how many total customers I have. I want to compare that to next month and see if my business is growing. I want to see if those people that were resets are now active. And I want to just give them the best customer service. That is my intention. I want them to know what I know, and I want them to love their Juice Plus because my health has completely changed because I eat that product every single day. I'm so healthy because of it. And if my, my team knows, before Juice Plus, I wasn't healthy. In fact, I was very sick. So I'm very grateful, and I want everyone I know to eat their Juice Plus regularly. So before we close, does anyone have any questions? Is this useful? Did you get a nugget? Okay. You're welcome. It's related, but it's probably not in this report. Is there a way to see a customer's first ship date for those of us who weren't very good at customer care? Yeah, we just call a company. They're amazing. Call a company and just say, hey, when did the first one go through? But there's no report. I wish there was. It used to be on this one. And I'm, I'm trying to get them to take off the address in there and put the email on there instead and some other stuff because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to do a genealogy report to get people's addresses. The phone number is great. Ms. Carolyn? Can you tell your story for the people that may have not heard it real briefly? Um, like way back when? My, my story story? Okay, so. Just this overview of your story so that the people don't Okay. Hear. So I worked in the medical field for over 20, yep. Can I ask you yeah, yeah. If you send them a little picture, I know a little bit right uh -huh. time, and then you tell them that their product's going to ship on such a date. Yeah. I do, because I text you. Well, see, I also have a whole month, right? Because it's only the 3rd of September. So I will send you that little picture. I have one of complete and one of the trio that says your order's coming. And then I will say to you, hi, Jody. I haven't talked to you in a while. Love to connect. I want you to also know your order's going to ship on the 23rd. I know it's way out, but put it on your calendar. I'm going to text you, because I know you. You're my friend, girl. And I've seen you with your cell phone in your pocket. I know you got that text. Also, halfway through the month, I'm going to send you a message on private message or Facebook because when you watch it and you see it, it makes that little emblem of your face. So I'm like, ta -da! you saw it, <laughs> right? I told you it's coming. I told you to put it on your calendar. I also know it's going to ship on the 22nd, which let's just say hypothetically it's a Thursday. So I think Thursday, Friday, probably by Monday, they'll I'll be able to go in and click on that blue USM number in the queue and click that on. It will take me to your UPS page. And then I put a little tickle, so like Monday the 25th, text ETA Jody. So on the 25th, I'll see that, and then I'll text you and say, hey, your order, UPS, it'll be on your door on the 29th. You know, make sure you take it or your neighbors are going to eat it. <laughs> I've had that. I, my girlfriend, Joelle, Heidi will tell you, her neighbor sold her juice plus all the time, and we know she sold it. <laughs>